a new term that I actually had never heard before. And I have lived in the world of bespoke clothes and luxury and um, all the fabrications and beautiful you know, textiles, but I had never before heard the term bespoke swag. <laughs> and I love it. So from 1970, just a little history lesson for you guys, from 1970 until 1982, Swag was an attitude that inspired defiance, right? You walked with a swagger, swagger was attitude. It represented someone's inner beliefs and trustworthiness. Swag was a way of life, really. And then hit the dot-com years. And in the 90s, swag morphed. And it came to represent cheap t-shirts, pens, ball caps, uh, water bottles, things that had other people's logos on it, and who wants to advertise for all those other people. So long gone were the years where swag actually stood for something of substance. But now you may be asking yourself, how can I get some of that old style swag? And I'm going to say you're in luck because our guest today is going to tell you that you were either born with it or you can get it from him. <laughs> so how did he get from bespoke swag to donating 94,000 PPE face masks to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia? That's really our story for today. Welcome, Andrew Langsam, and we are happy to have you share your story and the history of DAS, DAS, Dynamic Advertising Solutions. And I'm just going to kick us off that I was reading a story that last year in January, you and your team actually made a conscious business decision to measure your progress based on impact to community at a higher level than your financial returns. What led to that? I think that's phenomenal. Well, first and foremost, Lauren and Amy, thank you both so much for having me here. This is a, a real treat. Uh, I, I don't get to share our story very often. And so I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, reaching out to, to discuss. So let me give you the, the short version of it. So our, our company was founded about 18 years ago. And as every business owner starts a business at the end of the day, they start that business to, you know, to create an income, to provide for their family, to create a quality life. And we started the business in that same realm of we wanted to make money. We wanted to, you know, have our independence. And what happened is as the business began to grow and we began making money, we realized that, that there was a void. It wasn't just about having money anymore because, you know, we were comfortable. And now it was about what could we do for, you know, others and how could we grow our organization? How could we grow dynamic advertising solutions and have others experience what we're experiencing? So we created this wonderful platform and really went on a recruiting spree and hiring. And we're, we're not a, a huge company, but we were able to bring on you know, a couple dozen of really committed individuals who have now also been able to experience that same type of success. So we started with ourselves wanting to be successful and then creating an organization of successful, happy individuals to what more can we do now? What's next? What is that next stage? Because we're all making money. How can we feel you know, relevant and important in our communities? And in the beginning of this year, we, we well, actually at the end of last year, we talked about this and our annual meeting in January, we rolled this, we rolled this concept out. We need to do more. Mm -hmm. So then you do this in January, in March, COVID strikes. Did you suddenly think, oh my goodness, what have we gotten ourselves into here? Well, it was, um, it was a really eye-opening experience because we got into COVID. And at first, when everything started happening, we're like, hey, you know, it's only going to be a couple of weeks. We're going to get through this. Everything is going to be fine. All of a sudden, March 15th, the bottom falls out of our business. You know, we literally dropped over 90% in revenue from the middle of March to the, uh, you know, to, to getting into April. So we had meetings with our executive team. We were talking about, you know, 
furloughing people? How do we keep people on board and, and, and still set, you know, and still, you know, survive, you know, what's to come? Because obviously nobody had a crystal ball. Nobody understood what we were going to be up against. Um, and then what happened is the, uh, the, PP, the PPP loans came out and we were able to commit to keeping everybody. So we were able to keep our entire staff on board. And once we got through the nuances of that, you know, of, of that beginning of, you know, the, the middle of March till the PPP money came out, we were able to get together as an entire company and talk about where we are as an organization. What are we hearing from our clients? What are the needs looking like? And that's when some of our customers came to us and said, can you help us get things like face masks? How do we get face masks? How do we get, you know, boot covers? How do we get Buffon caps? All of our regular sources have dried up because there has been this massive surge of demand. Well, we already had a team of people in place overseas that were assisting us with all of our regular daily business of importing branded promotional products. So we reached out to them and we said, can you help us get these items? And they said, sure, not a problem. So all of the sudden, we became a tremendous resource for all of these other organizations that couldn't, that, that didn't have the wherewithal of the resources to be able to bring these products in themselves. You read in the news how many restaurants got, you know, got taken advantage of. They went on to Alibaba. They tried to find all these different sources to purchase products, but nobody really could come across any legitimate sources unless you had physical people there on the ground, which we did. So we went and we toured a variety of different factories. We inspected all of our products and we were able to pivot in April and start providing not only our clients, but we opened up doors to a lot of other new clients by providing these items. That's an amazing story. And, you know, I, I always, my heart skips a beat when I hear the stories of how the PPP loans actually enabled so many businesses to keep going, but how it wasn't enough to just keep going. The pivot is really the thing. And I get that now you're, you know, you're supplying your clients and you're providing whatever you can, but then donating 94,000 masks, that's a different initiative. Where did that come from? So part of how that happened was when we had our annual meeting and we talked about doing more for the community, there were a, a couple things that we were talking about. And in my organization, all of my sales associates are required to get involved in nonprofits that they feel a connection to. Now they may have an affiliation with them of some sort, or they just may be passionate about it. It could be animals, it could be you know cancer organizations, youth programs, whatever that might be. That's something that we believe very, you know, very strongly in is, you know, giving back. And so when we talked about our community initiatives, these were some of the things that came up. And as we, be, and as we began um, importing a lot of the PPE items, we realized that all of these organizations need those things too. So we started on a smaller scale, donating a couple thousand at a time, going to the local fire station, um, and donating some. And so we started on that small scale. And then what happened was Children's Hospital of Philadelphia was an organization that came up from multiple different people. And we thought that we wanted to do something different. We wanted to give, not just to give a little something, but give something that would be significantly impactful. Something that we could feel. You know, when, when you want to give, it's, it's easy to just, you know, give away a couple hundred masks. It's not easy as a company to give away something of that scale without everybody embracing it and genuinely feeling that. And so it was, it was really as a feel good for our organization to show, look, we are making a difference. We're more than just a promotional product sales company. We're an organization that actually cares about our community and we're gonna do as much as we possibly can to help. And I should point out to our viewers that you guys are located in Philadelphia. So it makes it very, very relevant. And it sounds like something that people could be doing all over the world, all over the country for sure. So setting an example is always a great thing. And thank you for all that you've done, but you aren't done. You're, you're just, you know, kind of kicking off this whole new creativity. And it's not that you're already you know, not already in a creative business, but now you're kind of taking it to new heights. So 
you've got a next big idea that has to do with bringing on employees who um, have autism. That is correct. That is correct. So we, at the end of last year, we acquired a new warehouse where we're going to be increase our warehousing and fulfillment capabilities. It's a 32,000 square foot warehouse in Philadelphia. And a lot of our clients come to us to help them with employee retention and recruitment. And so we create a lot of custom kits in our business. So a lot of our stuff requires a lot of handwork. So whether it's a retention kit or a franchise new store opening kit, which might be, you know, uh, menus and a floor mat and uniforms. But ultimately, we're taking a lot of different items and we're producing them, bringing them into our facility and then sending out all of these kits to all of these different locations. And we thought with this expansion, what else can we do for our community? So this warehouse is in an opportunity zone. So we've already been actively recruiting from individuals that live in that neighborhood. And then we are creating a buddy system to help to work with a vocational school and bring that program to our facility to help individuals with autism, with independent skills to be able to be a part of our workforce. Wow, that's amazing. And this is something that our team is embracing because when you start talking about autism, you realize most people are literally one person removed from someone that is directly impacted. Mm -hmm. And when we shared this idea, all of the stories from our staff that we heard, I mean, you're talking about like, like it brought tears to people's eyes, you know, bringing, I am very culture oriented in our company. We are a really tight knit family. We, we do a lot of company activities together. We have fun. There's been a tremendous amount of friendships created here. Mm -hmm. And being able to share something so special that has impacted so many individuals here is amazing. And I'm not saying that this is gonna be an easy feat for us. There's gonna be a lot of challenges. And my team is stepping up to the plate because they really want to make this happen. They want to make this a reality. They want to help give these people hope and help them feel like they are a part of something bigger and give them something to look forward to on a daily basis. That's wonderful. So, Andrew, how can our viewers find you, follow you, join in your mission? Any of those? So, uh, you can visit us online at getdas.com. Uh, we are on Facebook at Dynamic Advertising Solutions. We're also on LinkedIn. I'm personally on LinkedIn as well. And, you know, I, I would love to be of assistance if you if you uh, private message me or on Facebook or on LinkedIn, I'm happy to respond. And, you know, any anything helps, you know, any ideas, any experience shares. Uh, this isn't just about business. I would love to learn about people's experiences to help us grow as an organization. Thank you for your, your creativity and all that you're doing in your community. Thank you for coming to share with us. And we'll look forward to following you and learning more about what you're doing. So Andrew Langsam, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure.